catastrophic 7.8 magnitude earthquake strikes Turkey and massive strong aftershocks are continuing. And this is the uh, 7.8 earthquake right there, basically uh, shaking all of Turkey, all of Israel, Syria, the Aegean Sea of Greece, and we'll see what it looks like, this whole area, and the, there we go, panning out, the USGS stops the square right there, but you can see the whole Aegean has been shaken, and uh, the seismologists were warning of a massive earthquake, and it looks like this is it. Okay, so this is Israel right there, Syria here, Lebanon, all of the Levant has shaken, this, of course, is uh, the Nile River, the Delta, Cairo, and uh, the Aegean Sea of Greece right here. Um, going back, uh, I want to see if we have the, we can put the uh, fault lines there. Okay, it is a fault line. And basically, basically, it's the Transjordanian Fault. Look, 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 right there. It's the top of the Transjordanian Fault that ends up here. And of course, this thing here. And uh, if we go back in, there you go. That's the Transjordanian Fault, right there. The northern part of it. There we go. It ends right there. This is where we have our epicenter and it looks like Cyprus here was once a part of this thing right here if you fit that puzzle in there so let's go back this is it right here let's pan out and uh, I have told you the Sea of Galilee which is around northern Israel right there is actually there it is Sea of Galilee right there okay is that it it looks like it yes right there the Sea of Galilee is a volcanic lake and all this here around the Sea of Galilee are beautiful uh, hot spring baths since antiquity they've been there and that's because there's magma under there. That's why you have all these hot spring baths around the Sea of Galilee. So the Transjordanian Fault goes up this way and into this area right there, as we saw before. This is a 7.8 at 17.9 uh, kilometers depth. And the other ones are not small either, 6.7. Okay, this one was at... Uh, UTC 117, that's about 317 local time. And 10 minutes later you had this one, 6.7. Basically the same time, all these here. You can see basically they're all the same time. This one was about three, just three hours later. So they're still going on. This is, the red is the latest, five magnitude right there. And this one here, the past hour, 4.4. And uh, that's so big, I'm sure it made the whole Earth ring like a bell, which usually happens in big earthquakes. It's uh, uh, recorded on seismometers all over the world. Now, what happens here is this, you can see from the uh, line right here, the... Uh, Anatolia Fault, let's go back to our fault lines and go back. When you have a big earthquake like this, it, uh, it just sort of shifts the pieces of the puzzle. And you can see this one here, right here. That's another fault right there. The Anatolia Fault, that goes down. You can even see the crack here. It goes down here into Athens. And... Um, our geologists here, and this is where I'm sitting, Athens, Greece, right here. It's very cold. It's freezing. We have a snowstorm. We'll be having snow all week. Um, 
which is very rare for the snow to be hitting the center of Athens, but that this is this is the case. And um, the seismologists in Greece have told us that we're expecting a massive earthquake here as well. And uh, basically they know from the pressure, the rock pressures. So this is 7.8, a very catastrophic earthquake. As we can see, it's because of the fact that the African plate is moving north uh, towards the Eurasian plate. And this is uh, causing the, the, uh, the uh, earthquake, these massive earthquakes. Again, this is the Transjordanian Fault. Uh, I did upload a, a couple of months ago a video on the Israeli geologists that said they are expecting a six magnitude earthquake in Israel, and they're very apprehensive because of the fact that there's a lot, there's a lot of old buildings in Israel, as we can uh, understand. It's an ancient city. The holy, the holy places there have very old uh, things from the Roman Empire, also from Byzantium. And um, uh, they're warning that they should be fortified to withstand big earthquakes. Now, how feasible is that? I don't know. So this is a huge earthquake. And the as we said before, the... Let's go. The uh, aftershocks, as you can see, all along that line. The red are this past hour. Uh, if we go back to the big one, there is a lot of um, information we can get from that. Okay, very few people. I guess they're out in the streets, and uh, I'm sure they have frozen weather there as well. God forbid. Uh, one and a half thousand have reported at USGS. And um, landslide, significant area affected, significant population exposed, liquefaction, significant area affected, significant... So they do have landslides, obviously, it's a huge earthquake. Ground failure, shake map, shaking estimates used by ground failure preliminary will be updated and significant. Latest estimate area exposed to hazards, significant. Okay, a liquefaction also significant. Liquefaction triggered by this earthquake is estimated to be significant in severity and spatial extent. extent. Estimated population exposure significant. Around what, one thousand to ten thousand. Again, that for that's for the uh, landslides, and again for liquefaction. From ten thousand to one hundred thousand. So I guess that's about 80,000 right there, okay? So a number of people living near areas that could have produced liquefaction in this earthquake is significant. That's because there's a lot of rivers uh, in Turkey. A lot of rivers. Um, I've been there three times. I've been, to, uh, I've been here, Istanbul, three times. A lot of rivers there. A lot of little bridges and... Um, Obviously, as we can see, it's basically, as you can see, the low-lying area right there, the green. Um, you can see all these big rivers running through them. Okay, look at this. Lakes and rivers everywhere. And as I said many a time, the first thing you learn in Geology 101 is that everywhere you have a river is a fault line. So... Um, this is what's happening there. It's still ongoing. A very massive earthquake and um, liquefaction and landslides. Okay. I don't know what these are because I'm not a geologist. I don't know. Nearby seismicity. Uh, should we go to three weeks? Okay, this is what's been happening. And this is today's, of course, right? Where is it? It's under there somewhere. Okay. Okay. Uh, 7.8, 26 kilometers east of Nurda, Turkey. And all of this area has been affected, as we saw before. Very massive earthquake. Look at this. Okay, this is Europe. This is Africa. 
and uh, they USGS stopped it right there. But obviously, you can see even Crimea has felt it. Even Ukraine has felt it. Greece has felt it. Israel, uh, northern uh, northern uh, Egypt, um, and the uh, Ar Arabian Peninsula. So, uh, and we're still getting aftershocks from this. Uh, the weather is terrible, uh, meaning that a lot of people, obviously, housing the houses have been. 7.8, nothing basically stands up over 7. Um, even Istanbul has felt it. Ankara is around here, the capital of Turkey is Ankara. Istanbul has felt it. Turkey has a lot of old buildings, a lot of Byzantine buildings. Um, even the modern buildings, I don't know how well they could stand to, to up to a 7.8. That's huge. And uh, Turkey has a very large population, as we know. Hopefully, this is the end of it. I don't know if it is, but they're still ongoing. So let's pray that uh, everybody there is safe, and that's the end of the air earthquakes there. Please leave your comments, and thank you for your support. Kindly support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box.